And, and obviously people uh, listening to those uh, abusive terms will also be upset by them. You've received them directly. We can't broadcast them, obviously, on the programme this time of the morning. But it's a sign, isn't it, that when you hear those terms, it's, it's, it's in unbelievable that you are receiving them so regularly. Why is it not being stopped? Well, I mean, the first thing to say is there's always been racist abuse out there. But when I was a new MP 30 years ago, if you wanted to abuse an MP, you had to literally write a letter, put it in a post box. Now you just press a button, and that's why you're getting thousands of this abuse. I think the real problem is anonymity, mm -hmm. and the real problem is that Twitter isn't doing enough. I believe that you should be allowed to be anonymous, you know, literally online, but the Twitter or Facebook, whatever, should have your actual name and address. And it's the anonymity. Much of this abuse, people wouldn't say it in public. No. Diane, how do you feel personally, though? Because after a while, you read these, these, these tweets and I imagine you sort of wade through them and you, you, it get, maybe it gets easier or not. But when you, when you suddenly realise that these people are making personal, vicious, vile attacks on you and who you are, regardless of your politics just because they can. How do you feel personally? It gets to you personally. I think I'm quite robust. I've been in politics for years mm. and you know, mm. I'm used to the you know, the hurly burly. But it's it's very it's very undermining, it's very humiliating, and it gets so you almost don't want to go online in the morning. You don't want to go on Twitter because you know what you're going to see. And in fact, for long periods of time, I don't go on Twitter because I know what I'm going to see. Well, I can imagine that uh, there are a number of people, especially those who don't regularly use social media, who think, well, just avoid it. What is the compulsion to use social media for MPs? And how easy or difficult would it be just to think, well, I, do, I don't need to see that, so I'll just log off. Well, you've got to remember, it's not just Facebook and Twitter, it's email and actual letters. And with email, my staff and I have to open it because you don't know. It's, you know, your constituents are in touch with you all the time. So you just can't not look at your email. Mm -hmm. In terms of Twitter and Facebook, we do use, like all politicians, Twitter and Facebook to communicate with our constituents. So even though I have actually come off Twitter for quite long periods of time because it was so upsetting, my staff do have to go on Twitter and mm -hmm. see what's happening. So they go through it. Uh, during the election, towards the end of the election, you had to step back from, from frontline campaigning because of your health. Was there an element that all of this and, 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 and what was happening to you online and the abuse, did that sort of compound what you were going through physically as well? The type of, you know, abuse I was getting online did compound things. You can't, it's like being in the middle of a vortex. I mean, obviously, you're in the public eye and, and you know how people can be, but until you see some of the things that I was getting on a daily basis, you wouldn't believe it. And I wouldn't believe, really, in 2017 that people would be sending this type of abuse.